Yep. All right, everybody, welcome to another Spark and Bear segment. Today we're going to be talking about uh, reviews versus, what's the other thing? Sales. <laughs> and uh, this yeah. has been a little thing that's bugging me all the time because a lot of people like to uh, like to justify what makes a game good. Yeah, uh, give give proof what makes a game good by using either reviews or sales. Both of which are somewhat invalid. Yeah, yeah. somewhat in, in, invalid. Only if they're actually. Yeah. See, see, it's it's a lot of <laughs> it's a lot of things behind it. So it's better just to talk of, talk about it. Anyways, yeah. first of all, uh, well, uh, I like to start start off on like what people do when they uh, throw the sales card or the reviews card. Uh, it may be fanboys most of the time, <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, mostly 360 fanboys when they discuss about sales and stuff like that. 360 fanboys. Uh, but it also could be we fanboys through uh, uh, PSA fanboys, it doesn't matter. But mm -hmm. when there's like no fanboyism concern, people throw in the sales card sometimes. Let's start with the sales, the sales card. What does I mean? Uh, fundamentally, what does sales tell uh, tell us? Pretty much. Well, to be honest, it, it, it only already tells us that a particular product is somewhat popular in some in in a particular area. Doesn't really ensure quality because you know there's so many different uh, factors that you have to you know uh, put in there, like you know uh, consumer ignorance and stuff like that, for example. Like th there may be something that a lot of people are buying, but they may not know about the quality, or they may not know about certain things and 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 whatnot, basically. So it's kind of irrelevant. And mm. That's why that's what I'm saying. Uh, just just to say that something. <coughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> that's fine. That's fine. Uh, what I think sales tell tells me, uh, not really. It doesn't actually tell me anything, but it gives me a hint on how many people actually play the game. But. Mm. Uh, but sometimes that I can't even determine that because you got games like there that's been out there that's been really lowly rated and stuff like that, and that's the review part. <laughs> but then, and then again, you play it yourself, and that's also the review part. Uh, it's a technical error. I see the map back there's uh, mostly still trying to pull. <laughs> I completely lost my train but, um, of thought. Yeah, but as, I, like you say, it is some kind of indication as to how, how many people. Like, I think sales really uh, benefits more the company that does the actual game because really, if it, if the, if the company obviously knows how much you sign and they know there's a desire for more, or if there isn't, blah blah blah. So I think it's a lot more important for a company as opposed to uh, gamers when discussing quality, especially when it comes to games. Um, Another thing as well in terms of sales is that um, when people discuss sales uh, of actual consoles, like people compare the sales of 360s to PS3s or even Wii's, uh, which is kind of unfair because obviously the 360 came out in 2005, uh, PS3 and Wii both came out in 2006, so making a comparison there would be kind of unfair since the 360 you know, had a whole year to get its own uh, strong foothold as it were. We keep on losing our train of thought, yeah, <laughs> but uh, uh, but yeah, sales shouldn't shouldn't be a, val a valid uh, justification of if a game is good or not. If you're listening to what mm. we're saying, anyways, <laughs> going on to review to reviews now. Once again, not not a good way of justifying how good a game is. I mean, basically. At the end of it, at the end of the day, you should only trust on what you think, not what some other people think. You can yeah. watch. The, I'm not saying that you shouldn't read or watch reviews or look at review scores, but uh, you should take it with a grain of salt. That's pretty much what I'm. Pretty much what I'm saying. So you have anything yeah. on the, on the review? Well First, personally, I think reviews are very good indications as to whether a game uh, is good or not. I mean, first of all, you're getting another person's opinion who reviews games. Now, that opinion could be biased, uh, 
the genre may not be their particular, you know, it may not be their favourite genre, like the housemates came in earlier just asking to borrow a game and he said he hates fighting games because they frustrate him. So, you know, someone reviewing a fighting game obviously is going to review it badly. Um, you know, maybe the consoles, their type of, type of console. So, there are a ton of biases, but generally a, a review can give you a general, uh, you know, uh, I hate using the term general a lot, but yeah, um, <laughs> it'll, it'll give you sort of, you know, a, a guideline as to whether the game is good or not. And usually when I look at a uh, game review, like, um, there's a game a lot of people seem to be talking nowadays, not reviewers, but your know, websites, sorry, just, just games in general, called uh, Nier, which came out last year, and it kind of came out under the radar. Uh, it's a Square Enix action uh, RPG. And uh, a lot of people seem to be liking it, and I saw some of the reviews, and instead of concentrating on what their opinion was, I just concentrated on what the game looked like, you know, in terms of graphics, in terms of sound design, in terms of gameplay, because that's really what you should be looking at. Because they go into it, but like I said, they could be biased about it or this and that. And um, there are a lot of uh, reports of, well, kind of records of, um, of websites being biased. Like, for example, um, I know the Black Baron talks about this whole we, uh, it's we hate and conspiracy. Yeah, yeah. It, it's uh, true to it, <laughs> but I think he's kind of overboard, going a bit overboard with that. I mean, with some PS3 games that happens as well, like uh, uh, like um, the reviews for Killzone 3 are coming out. I mean, the open beta just went live uh, this weekend, and um, actually I played a bit of that, that was pretty cool. But yeah, um, a lot of people are slating it because apparently the story isn't as good as the second one, or blah, blah, blah. And then they turn around and uh, give like Black Ops and Modern Warfare 2 story 9 out of 10s, and... 10 out of 10 is so innovative and so revolutionary. Yeah, and just look up any war film and you can find a plot for Black Ops or Modern Warfare. So, yeah, that's just... It's, it's just hypocrisy like that. It's it's, it's irritating sometimes. Basically, so. basically uh, what, you, uh, what I can draw from you, from you is that... Uh, that uh, reviews... <laughs> It's, they seem like they never have the best journalist on them. <laughs> they never have the best journal. Either they got a bunch of biased idiots, or uh, or just uh, it, well, it's just that a hard a good review is hard to come by. Somebody who will overlook overlook their personal views on a genre or something and just review the damn game <laughs> instead I mean, instead, uh, instead of just uh, saying like just because. I don't like JRPGs. I need to give this a bad score. I mean, mm. I mean, like for example, sometimes even in lesser cases, uh, sometimes people just don't understand or get the game. Like, um, uh, I think it was Beyond Good and Evil, um, a little known um, mm -hmm. sort of uh, cult classic. I think when that came out, part of the reason why it did so poorly for the reviews and I think it reviewed badly because we didn't understand it I think it was either Beyond Good and Evil or some other game I can't remember what it was and I think like Game like Game Spot and um, Game Trailer just gave it like 5 out of 10 and stuff like that these were like really I forgot which game it was but if, if I remember maybe put it in the annotations or whatever but I think it was Beyond Good and Evil um, but yeah sometimes just people just don't understand the game or it's just not their cup of tea so they're obviously going to be biased um, in that case, like I said, if, if that's the case, then just look at what you like about it. Do you like the visuals? Do you like the art style? Do you like the music? Do you like the gameplay? That sort of thing. I mean, um, yeah. what, what you, uh, either that or I keep on going. <laughs> Sorry. Either that or find somebody who will review the game and like it. Mm. <laughs> Somewhat who actually likes yeah. the genre and they'll and they'll uh, they'll review it more fairly. I mean, uh, uh, maybe I may, maybe think, maybe find well, somebody who li maybe to find somebody who likes the genre too much is not a good thing because maybe they'll give it give it too high of a score. Find a middle ground or something. <laughs> mm. I, I don't I don't know. It's, Just it's, ask your friends usually or or rent it. In my opinion, that's that's what I normally do. You know. Yeah, but the best person to trust when it comes to getting a game is yourself. It's it's no it's no it's of nobody else. Because only you know nobody what you like, basically. All right. You have something and, and, else to say, yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say, and people also go to the the um, go to Metacritic quite a lot for certain things, and Metacritic is all right because it gives you a an average score or whatever on on um, 
on, on you know on, on on a particular game. But if you go to Metacritic now and you search, I don't know, Street Fighter Three Third Strike, for example, I think like uh, last year, um, Black Bond did the same video as well. That got like a seventy back then, and I think now it's only got an eighty. You know, the most played fighting game and the most uh, well-renowned and most well-respected fighting game, only getting under you know double A status or, or A status or whatever. So you know, you've got to think about that. Are these reviewers really that? you know, that reliable that, that they, you know, that they determine if you purchase it or not. And really, it's your own money, it's your own game system, it's your own taste, so, you know, take, yeah. take from it what you will. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. take the reviews with the game, Grand Assault, don't take it too damn seriously, because you keep on doing that, and you'll end up playing a game that you won't like. <laughs> yeah, much. and that's something that you don't you don't want. It doesn't matter if it's Killzone Three, any of these huge blockbuster games. Uh, really, I'm 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 starting to get tired of shooters, so Killzone Three is 